am David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. Join me as we uncover unique energy solutions across Canada. Every week, we'll bring you the stories of people in businesses and communities who are changing the way we power this country. Green lighting is about much more than just getting more light out of less energy. Today, we'll talk to two lighting experts to try to get to the bottom of green lighting. The Green Lighting Store was designed to showcase what's possible in energy efficient lighting technology and design. Don Chawanka has created very interesting side-by-side -side comparisons to show how simply changing a light fixture, you can use half as much energy to get the same amount of light. This is a simple one foot by four foot, 32 watt T8, two amp fixture uh, that you see a lot. And uh, by just going to this fixture over here, using a near four 96% reflector, we can cut the power down in almost half and you get just about as much light out of one bulb with this as you're getting out of two bulbs with that. The green lighting store is full of these kinds of side-by-side -side comparisons. It's also full of LED replacements for several different applications. This latest iteration of lighting technology is about as efficient as compact fluorescence, but it'll last longer, doesn't mind the cold, and will have no problem being dimmed. These lamps here are used for recessed pot lights, and they're dimmable. Uh, down here is an example of a MR16, which is a small low voltage lamp. Up here is a couple of flush, or well, surface mounted panels, a one by one and a one by 30 inch. They make them in a variety of other sizes. You can also get them to change color, so you can have uh, different color temperatures. While the green lighting store is full of the latest and greatest lighting technologies, we also wanted to approach green lighting in the home. That's why we talked to Wayne Rogers. He's a lighting consultant for luminescence lighting, and few other people know their compact fluorescence and LEDs better than Wayne. Compact fluorescent is relatively inexpensive because it's mature, but as you can see, they're relatively bulky, so they don't do a very good job of projecting light. They don't like cold temperature. So, and from an energy efficiency point of view, they're more or less equivalent to, to the LED technology. The, the cost is low uh, relative to, to the LED technology. Now, LEDs being more expensive, though, love the cold temperature. Uh, you could use uh, LEDs in a freezer. You'll see them, for example, at, at Walmart uh, in the freezers now on a motion sensor, saving a huge amount of energy. So they like the cold temperature. They are relatively more expensive because it's, an, it's early technology. From an energy efficiency and life expectancy point of view, we've got maybe 10,000 hour life expectancy and these guys burn out. These guys have 25,000 hour life expectancy, but that means that, that at 25,000 hours, they're still working. LEDs don't burn out. They will just get dimmer. The story of the Philips ambient LED is the story of lighting's future. By successfully emulating a 60 watt incandescent light bulb with LED technology, the sky's the limit. Two years ago, the federal government in the United States challenged the manufacturers to come up with a lamp that would uh, be five times more energy efficient than a standard incandescent lamp, would last much, much longer, and produce the equivalent amount of light to the 60 watt lamp, and would fit into the same locations that the 60 watt lamp uh, fits and is in most common use today. So the Philips won this award uh, in developing the lamp. They obviously spent a lot more money than the, than the million dollar award to develop the lamp, but they came up with, with this product as we see it. It's, it's changed a little bit, but, but generally the lamp has this funny orange appearance to it, but it, it doesn't stay yellow when you turn it on. If I turn it on, we end up with, with a white looking, uh, warm white looking lamp that, that one can uh, view uh, just like an incandescent 60 watt lamp. And uh, Wayne, I understand these are little technological marvels as well. I see when you put your hands up there, you, uh, you've got a little bit of blue showing on your hands. What's going on there? Well, what I did is I lifted one of these uh, segments on the side, these uh, segments that are containing phosphorus, and you'll see that, that the LEDs inside are actually blue. So the blue, the blue LED is emitting a radiation that causes the phosphorus in the plastic to emit light. Uh, so it is not the, the, there aren't LEDs in the, in the surface, it's actually being excited by the LED radiation. So, and then the metal bands that are on the outside are used as a heat sink to carry the heat away because LEDs are sensitive to heat. 
With that said, sometimes the most efficient solutions are the simplest ones. Using light harvested from the roof, piped through a reflective tube, you can connect yourself to the outdoors in an otherwise windowless room. What we're looking at is a solar tube. This is an energy efficient device that is bringing daylight down through the second floor uh, from the attic uh, and it is producing about 200 watts of incandescent equivalent light. Let me show you how it works. Wow, so that's all daylight coming from two stories up. That's right, here comes the daylight. You've been listening to Green Energy Futures. It's not always technology that makes something a remarkably green solution. As we learned today, sometimes it's as simple as letting the sun shine in. If you'd like more information about the series, visit our website at www.greenenergyfutures.ca. We'd love to hear from you on Facebook or Twitter. I'm David Dodge.